Hi, I'm Joel Osteen. I'm with my friends Lee and Shanae Stokes, pastor of Destiny. This weekend, they'll be giving away a copy of my new book. Visit Destiny this weekend with Lee and Shanae Stokes, where Joel Osteen's newest book, The Power of I Am, will be given to all first-time visitors. We're Lee and Shanae Stokes, and we can't wait to meet you and your family. Destiny is a great place for you and your friends. Join us at Destiny and get Joel's new book. Invite your family and friends. Pastors Lee and Shanae Stokes invite you, your family, and your friends to be their guests. Resurrection Sunday at Destiny, Sunday, March 27th, at both 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. services. Each first-time guest will receive a free copy of Joel Osteen's new book, The Power of I Am. Immediately following the 11 a.m. service, Destiny Kids will have their annual Easter egg hunt at Faust Elementary School, 2610 Floyd Street, just two blocks up from the church. Remember, we need candy, and each child needs to bring their own basket with them. It's open to children ages 2 to 11 and grades K through 5. Be there. seen heaven? Nobody. How many of y'all have seen Jesus before? I mean, he's standing right there. Nobody. How many of y'all have seen the cross he's hung on? Nobody. None of us have. What happened? How many of you have seen the change in your life since you got born again? Yes. That happened because you believed what was in this book. This book is our key, uh, is our window into what God says. So we From the book, we find out if we'll believe with our heart that we're righteous and confess with our mouth the same thing that God says, we'll have that thing that he says. Are y'all with me? Come on, it's one of the greatest things in life. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13, Paul talks about this is called the spirit of faith. This is the spirit of faith. This is what faith is. Uh, Paul says it right here in in, in 2 Corinthians. He says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. He's saying, he's saying, this is what the spirit of faith is. It's believing coupled with speaking. This is what causes your faith to work. You believe in your heart what God says and then speak it out of your mouth. That's what brings it to pass. Say it out of your mouth. Say, this is very simple. It really is. Y'all saw it in Romans. That's how we got saved. And that's how you get everything else from God. It's called the spirit of faith. Jesus spoke about this in Mark chapter 11. And uh, the Bible refers to it as mountain moving faith. Look at this in Mark chapter 11 verse 22. I know this is very very elementary, but we've got to get back to this. Uh, And I'll show you in the scriptures how important it is. Jesus answered and said to to his disciples, he says, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. And what Jesus is talking about here, a mountain of sickness, a mountain of cancer, a mountain of debt. Whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. Here we hear it. We see it again. Believing in the heart coupled with saying with your mouth. He says, uh, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. What have you been saying? Oh, I'm sick and tired. I'm broke. Ah, we're never going to come out of this. Oh, my marriage isn't going to make it. Oh, but you can, what God is letting us know here, you can turn around every situation. Your marriage, you've got to begin to call those things that aren't as though they were. Jesus here never tells us to call the things that we see the way they are. You're not obligated to look at a circumstance and a situation and call it the way it is. We're obligated to look at a circumstance and a situation and call it what God says. 
God calls you rich. God calls you blessed. God calls you healed. And the sooner you align your mind and your mouth with that, you come into unity with heaven, that will begin to happen in your life. That's all salvation is. Salvation is you've come into agreement in your mind or in your heart and your mouth with what God says. You, you unify with that. And the Bible says, if any two on earth shall agree. In fact, Jesus gave us this law of uniting, this law of unity. He, if, if we'll agree with what heaven says, he says, it's going to happen there on earth. You agree with God, what he's already said, believe it in your heart and say it out of your mouth. This is what salvation is. Salvation is, uh, is a matter of renewing your mind, your thinking to what God's already said about you. When you look at your life, you may see broke, you may see sick, you may see things that aren't contrary with God's word, but that are contrary with God's word. But as a believer, how we turn the situation around is begin to call it what God calls it in that book. We're not obligated to call it what we see. That's why it's called the spirit of faith. We don't look at the situation and call it what we see. We look at the situation and call it what God said about it. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what he's talking about. Are y'all with me? Now watch this. Uh, and and uh, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Y'all, what a blank check do we get? This is a blank check. You say, well, but, but uh, pastor, no, no, get that butt out the way. This is what the spirit of faith is. And the more you, now watch, you say, well, how, how can I say what I don't know? That's the key. You got to get your thinking in line with it and your words will follow. Are y'all with me? Here, now I, turn over to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. The first chapter of God's instruction manual shows us this. The first chapter, watch this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. This means it didn't look like what he wanted it to look like. God created, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of, uh, over the, face of the waters. So the Spirit of the Lord was present, but it was still messed up. Even though the spirit of God, of God was present there, nothing changed until verse three. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. What could have happened is God could have looked at that darkness and said, look at all that darkness. But he didn't do that. He looked at the darkness, looked at the void and the, and the way it was and said, light be, let there be light. He called light when he saw darkness. This is the modus operandum of God. The first few verses of the book show us God creates with his words and he calls things what he wants them to be, not what he sees them. Are y'all with me? This is the first words of the book. And that's why you get saved with believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. Why? Because in Genesis verse 26, it says, and let us make man after our image and after our likeness. So we have the same ability that God does to create. We create with our words, just like God does. Now, why so many believers are, have persistent trouble. All of us are running into challenges, but we've got to re recognize that we're created like God. We've got to look at our situation and begin to call it what God calls it. But the only way you'll know what God calls it is to be in this book. And that's why you come to church. Give the person next to you a round of applause. Say, it's good to see you here today. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. This is going to change your life if you'll stick with this. Are y'all with me? All right. Now, uh, so in general, let me show you how powerful this is. God said, let there be light. And, God, and then God saw the light that it was good. God saw the light after he said it, not before he said it. We want to see change before we say it's changed. God says, say it's changed, then you'll see it's changed. All right. God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. You see here in verse four, God created light. That was light. Jump all the way down to verse 16. Then God made two great lights. God said, let there be light. And he wasn't talking about the sun. There was light, even though there wasn't a sun. He didn't invent, create the sun until down in verse 16. 
After he had created all these other things, you read through the whole chapter, you'll see that God didn't create the sun. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. God's word is so powerful, it'll create the thing before the things necessary there to make it happen. If you'll speak God's word, God will create wealth when there may not even be a resource for the wealth yet. Keep calling yourself what God calls you and you don't have to wait for the circumstances to line up. The circumstances will line up. God will do what you, what you say he said. Amen. I knew it was going to be a kind of teaching day today. That's all right. Now, let's see how this works. James, the brother of Jesus. Two brothers, half brothers of Jesus have books in the Bible. James is one of them and Jude is his other half brother. Let's take a look at James. James really has some insight to this. James is uh, the pastor of the first Jerusalem church. And watch what he writes here. In James chapter 3, jump, and we're going to look at verse 2 through 12. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. Watch what James writes. He says, for we often... St- For we all, say that includes me. Yeah. For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things, he is a fully developed character and a perfect man, watch these words, able to control his whole body and to curb his entire nature. You can change your body by your words. You can change addictions by your words. You can change your appetites by your words. I need to say that one more time (laughs) for myself. You can change your appetite by your words. (laughs) Watch Now watch the examples he gives us. If we put bits in the horse's mouths to make them obey us. Y'all know what they do. Put that bridle on the horse's mouth. To make them obey us, we can turn their whole bodies about. You turn the whole body. Now, what happens with a horse in that day? That's their transportation. It's a mode of transportation. You can take some place, some person from point A to point B by turning the mouth of the horse. Come on, somebody, get some revelation here. Likewise, look at the ships. Though they're so great, he's doing a comparison. Here's a small vision. Here's a small thing, a horse. But then here's a big one, a ship. Likewise, look at the ships. Though they are so great and are driven by rough winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the impulse of the helmsman or the driver determines. Even so, the tongue. Watch what he's saying here. The same way you take the mouth of a horse, the same way you take the rudder of a ship, you can move the whole ship and everything on it. Even so, the tongue. Likewise, the tongue. Such is the tongue. Even so, the tongue is a little member. It can boast of great things. Even though it's little, it can say, I'm healed, I'm rich, I'm blessed. I will live and not die. Are you with? He says, how much wood or how great a forest, a tiny spark can set ablaze. What he's saying here, you set a whole forest on fire by one little, one little spark. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is that spark. Are you with me? The tongue is uh, the tongue is a world of wickedness set among our members. Now he's showing us here why so many lives are being destroyed. Right here. A tongue of uh, let me see the a world of wickedness among our members contaminating and depraving the whole body and setting on fire the will of birth, the cycle of man's nature being itself ignited by hell. Do you know that the devil would love to get a hold of your tongue? He wants to. He wants to ignite it by hell. In fact, the Bible lets us know in in Ephesians chapter 6 with the whole armor of God when it talks about putting on the armor armor of God. Numerous is a helmet of salvation, uh, a breastplate of righteousness, loins girt about with truth, feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, sword of the spirit, right? And then he says, the shield of faith. Remember what the spirit of faith is? As I believe, therefore I've spoken. Okay, he says, holding up the shield of faith above all, holding up the shield of faith, whereby you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 
Spirit of faith is believing and speaking, but I have to hold up the shield of faith, which is as I believe I speak to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, the devil. The devil is aiming darts at my mouth. So I begin to look at my circumstances and say, oh, I'm never going to make it. My marriage is never going to make it. I'm going to die earlier. And we don't usually say it blatantly like that, but we get a negative tone in our voice, in our tongue. Instead of, instead of speaking blessing, instead of blessing our lives, instead of blessing our spouse and blessing our children, oftentimes we'll say negative things just out of emotion. But the Bible is saying you can set the on course of hell your entire life just by setting this, using this tongue. Hit the person next to you and say, oh, we got to speak blessing and not cursing. Anybody appreciating this? Isn't this good news? I'm just reading it straight out of the book. Watch this. Every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea animal can be tamed and has been tamed by human genius. Every animal. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. Ah, it is, it is a restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable, evil, full of deadly poison. Do you get what he's warning us here about? Don't ever say out of your mouth and, just, and it'll take some time to discipline it. But, oh, I'm so, so tired. And we get this negative talk and the devil's like, yes, 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 yes. He wants us to talk negative. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say this, the rest of my life of my will be the best of my life. I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm good looking. I feel good. I'm just I'm just messing with y'all. I knew that I would. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's read on the Bible. Watch this. With it, watch what James says. He says, with this tongue, which is full of deadly poison, he says, look at this. With it, we bless the Lord and, and Father, and with it, we curse men who were made in God's likeness. He said, with the same tongue, we lift our hands and praise the Lord, then we curse our own lives and other people's lives. Watch what he says. Out of the same mouth come forth blessing and cursing. These things, my brethren, ought not to be so. He says, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. We got to train the tongue. Does a fountain send forth simultaneously from the same opening fresh water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine figs? No. Neither can a salt spring furnish fresh water. He's saying two different things shouldn't come out of the same mouth. So he's letting us know here, we've got to change the words out of our mouth so we can change the circumstances and conditions of our life. When you get up and you look in the, look in the mirror in the morning, don't go, oh, I'm getting old. Look at these wrinkles. Uh, 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 uh. You good looking thing, you. Look at you. You're getting younger and stronger, getting healthier. It's going to be a great day today. This is a blood. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm getting younger and stronger. I'm telling you what, I talk to my body every day. I tell, listen to me, body. Joints, you're getting stronger. Every vein, every artery, every cell, I command you. Operate in the perfection that you've been created. Heart, brain, eyes, ears. In fact, every internal organ, I command you. Operate in the perfection that you've been created. I declare you're getting younger and stronger and healthier. I declare you'll live a long life. And by the way, no accidents, no calamity come now my dwelling place today. I'm blessed and highly favored. Everywhere I go, I'm going to be a blessing to everybody I come in contact with I declare Lord by the way my wife is so pretty thank you Jesus for such a pretty wife she's getting younger and prettier Lord I even say some things I can't tell y'all right now Lord oh Lord yeah 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 I tell them all that stuff I just be blessing her and blessing my children come on somebody I even bless y'all Lord I thank you for destiny those people are so full of faith full of the favor and grace of God I declare everywhere they go they're blessed no accidents come nigh their dwelling place I declare their homes are paid for by the way Lord their vacation homes are paid for too I declare they're gonna go on some of the greatest vacations they ever went on in their life I declare you see how I talk and as I talk like that it just keeps getting better and better y'all keep getting better looking and better looking I said, y'all keep getting little better looking. And I thought y'all didn't hear me right there or something. <laughs> hey, y'all see why though? Now, we'll turn over to Ezekiel chapter 37 and we're getting ready to go home. 
Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 10. Is this, is this awesome? Jesus, Jesus, when Lazarus was dead and, and Martha and Mary came running to him. Remember, they sent word that he had been dead. And, uh, and Jesus stayed where he was two days longer. Wasn't it in any hurry? And they said, he said, uh, they said, when Martha came to him, he said, my brother, my, if you had been there, my brother hadn't died. He said, he ain't dead, he's asleep. What? Can you imagine how infuriated she was at that? But Jesus never, imag- never, never declared that he's dead. Jesus doesn't talk about you being dead. He talks about you transferring out of that body to heaven. Never calls you dead. When the little girl, the, the little girl who had been, who had died, the centurion soldier's daughter, he never said, he said, oh, she's not dead. She's asleep. When he got there to the house and she was dead. But Jesus said, she's not dead. She's asleep. And so it was so ridiculous to the people and family standing outside that they, the Bible says they went from crying to laughing at him. Like, is he crazy? But do you get what Jesus said? He knew he was going to bring her back to life. He said, she's not dead. She's just asleep. This is how Jesus talks. When you look at your financial situation, don't start talking about how bad it is. Start talking about how big God, your God is. Don't magnify the problem. Magnify your God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. His praise will continually be in my mouth. See, when you magnify God, it minimizes your problem. Do you realize you've got a big God? He's bigger than any of your problems. He's bigger than any of your pain. There is not one problem that you're facing that God isn't able right now to deliver you from. But he's a God of faith, so we get our, lo- our mouth and our mind in agreement with what he says. And all heaven starts rejoicing when you start saying, God is going to turn this thing around. In fact, God, my God is my healer. Pain, I command you to go. Are y'all listening to me? Here it is. Watch this in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came on upon Ezekiel and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Bones represents death. Watch this. And then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, they were very many, uh, very many in the open, in the open valley. And indeed they were very dry. Valley always represents a low place in life. So it's, it, y'all get the pictures and the types here. Low place in life, a lot of dead things, dead marriage, dead finances, dead career, children jacked up, dead. There were very many dry bones and they were very dry, very dead circumstances. And he said to me, son of man, God, God says to him, to, the, to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Can the, God ask him, can these circumstances be turned around? Watch what he says. So I answered, oh Lord God, you know, I don't know, I'm God. You tell me if this situation is going to turn around. God's showing us error here. Watch this. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them God is saying don't ask me I'm asking you is your situation going to turn around or not don't sit there God I don't know tell me if you're going to turn around my finances God is going no 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 you tell me if you're going to turn them around again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the Lord thus says the Lord God to these bones surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with the with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that I am the Lord so I Ezekiel prophesied as I commanded so I Lee spoke to my finances as I was commanded I spoke to my career I spoke to my future and still do speak to my church speak to my body speak to my wife speak to my children because life death and life are in the power of my tongue so I prophesied as I commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. He's in the spirit. Things started changing as he started talking. And suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Ah, so he, also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Don't sit there and look at that situation not living. Start talking to it. Don't sit there and let your finances go, go to nothing. Don't sit there and let sickness take over your body. Start prophesying to it. You don't have to cry out to God about it. He already spoke about it. 
Come on, are y'all? Push the person next to you and say, I hope you're getting this. Will y'all start something with somebody next to you? Just push them, push them. <laughs> prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. I'm here to let you know that death and life is in your tongue. You've got the same spirit of God in you that created the universes. You didn't get the Holy Ghost Jr., you got the real deal Holy Ghost. You've got the same creative power of God on the inside of you. Don't sit there at a job and complain about the boss. Start talking about what God's about to do in your life. Are y'all listening to me? This is a lifestyle of talking. Don't talk so much about nothing. Talk a whole lot about the right things. Are y'all with me? Tell that person next to you, say, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Starting right now. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Father, we are the blessed. Body, I command you, be healed. Finances, I declare open doors of opportunity. I declare the people will walk into new opportunities, into wisdom, into favor. Favor is coming towards them at work, at home, at school, everywhere they go, a favor. Lord, you're open doors of opportunity for them that they never imagined. I declare they're getting younger and stronger. Tumors are falling off. Headaches, go! Arthritis, go! Sickness, go! And healing, come! Lift up your hands and give God the biggest shout of praise you give all day today. Come on, y'all. Come on. Thank you for that. Isn't that awesome? I want to thank you so much for taking time out to watch this broadcast. Here at Destiny, our mission is to win souls, make disciples, and live destiny. I know that God has great things in store for you and your family. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's so simple. Just say this simple prayer right after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus died and rose again for me. Come into my heart and be my Savior. If you said that simple prayer, we believe you just got born again. I want to encourage you to come and be with us at any of our services right here at Destiny. Know that God has great things in store for you. God bless you. Hi, I'm Joel Osteen. I'm with my friends Lee and Shanae Stokes, pastor of Destiny. This weekend, they'll be giving away a copy of my new book. Visit Destiny this weekend with Lee and Shanae Stokes, where Joel Osteen's newest book, The Power of I Am, will be given to all first-time visitors. We're Lee and Shanae Stokes, and we can't wait to meet you and your family. Destiny is a great place for you and your friends. Join us at Destiny and get Joel's new book. Invite your family and friends. Pastors Lee and Shanae Stokes invite you, your family, and your friends to be their guests. Resurrection Sunday at Destiny, Sunday, March 27th, at both 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. services. Each first-time guest will receive a free copy of Joel Osteen's new book, The Power of I Am. Immediately following the 11 a.m. service, Destiny Kids will have their annual Easter egg hunt at Faust Elementary School, 2610 Floyd Street, just two blocks up from the church. Remember, we need candy, and each child needs to bring their own basket with them. It's open to children ages 2 to 11 and grades K through 5. Be there. Find and fulfill God's good plan for your life at Destiny.